All right, so I told you at the beginning we were going to learn about tangents and normals, right? And we just went through five videos, and I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, how is Mr. Bywater so cool? Oh, that's not what you're thinking? Oh, okay. Well, you're probably thinking something along the lines of, but Mr. Bywater, you haven't done nothing with normals yet. You spoke about it that very first video, and then you not, did nothing with it. Okay, well, that's because normals are going to do exactly the same thing as the tangents, except you do the perpendicular, the negative reciprocal for the slope. Everything else, all the other procedures that we've done so far, will be exactly the same. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this first one, we did find the equation of the tangent to this. Okay, well, let's kind of move that out of the way. Let's say, what if it didn't say tangent? What if it said normal? Find the equation of the normal. Go away, little arrow pointy thing. You're annoying. Okay, so find the equation of the normal to f of x equals x plus 1 over x. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did before. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative because I need the slope. In order to write an equation, I need a slope. So I'm going to take the derivative. And we remember that the derivative of that at that specific point was negative 3. I'm going to do the same process to get the slope. Now, that is the slope of the tangent. So if that's the parallel slope, the tangent slope, then the normal slope is simply the negative reciprocal of that. And so if I want the normal, so m of the normal, or the perpendicular slope, is simply going to be negative, which will make it positive, and then flip it. So that'll be one-third. There you go. And now you write the exact same equation you did before. So we go y minus y1, which is 5 halves, equals the slope, one-third, times x minus one-half. Everything else is exactly the same. Okay, you haven't had enough yet. But you did five of the tangent, Mr. Bywater. Okay, fine. We'll do another one. Now, another one that you can do is to find the normal at the stationary points, right? What you did essentially in this question is we first found where the stationary points were at negative 2 and at negative 1. So the question that you could ask is, well, write the normal of the stationary points. Okay, well, the normal at the stationary point, if the stationary point is horizontal, normal to horizontal would just be vertical. So we're just looking for the vertical of these points. So what's the vertical? Well, the vertical at this one right here is simply x equals negative 2. And the vertical at this one is simply x equals 1. Those are the equations to the verticals at those points. You follow exactly the same process. We do exactly the same work because we're still finding the derivative. We're still going to find where the slope's horizontal, and then we get the normal from that. You haven't had enough yet, have you? All right, fine. You asked for it. Let's go to another one. Okay, so in this one, we found the tangent to the curve where a and b are constants was this. Okay, so that's a tangent, not a normal. That one isn't going to work so well given the question. We could change it, but... You know what, let's just go ahead and say, all right, let's find a different question. All right, so how about this one? Uh, find the coordinates of the points where the tangent at 1.4 meets the curve again. Okay, well, the normal probably isn't going to meet the curve again, but we could still write an equation for the normal at 1, 4. We could even show that it doesn't meet again. All right, let's show that. Let's say, let's show that the normal to x cubed plus x plus 2 at 1 comma 4 does not meet the curve again, because that's an interesting question. Why not? Okay, so we go through the same process. We find the derivative. We find that the derivative at 1 comma 4 is 4, right? You did that before. Okay, same process, but if I want the normal, shut up, stinking beeping thing. Okay, man, those... That's one of those little taxis that drives those people around. I have no idea how you get on one of those. I had kids once. I had like three kids with me in like suitcases. And they're like, no, 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 you can't get on. You have kids. I was like, what the heck? I have kids. Kids should be allowed on this. Kids are a problem in airports. They're like, no, 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 no. Kids can't get on here. I don't know what you got to get on those, but apparently having kids is not enough. Anyway, 
So I got the derivative, y prime equals, equals 4. To find the normal, I need the negative reciprocal of that. So the slope of the normal is going to be negative 1 fourth, right? Negative, flip it. Now I'm going to write an equation. So y minus y1, which is 4, equals negative 1 fourth times x minus x1. We'll go ahead and distribute, so I'll have y minus 4. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I've never done this problem before in my life, but hey, why not? Be a little crazy. Try something new. Add the 4. So we're going to have y equals negative 1 fourth x. Uh, add the 4. That'll be 16 over 4, so that'll be 17 over 4 there. Now we got an equation. How do I show that this does not meet the curve again? Well, I would actually take that and plug it in. So I would go negative 1 over 4x, right? Because these things are both equal to y. So I'm going to substitute there. So negative 1 fourth x plus, that's an x by the way, 17 over 4 is equal to x cubed plus x plus 2. You know, when I was in sixth grade, I participated in the literary festival, and the literary festival wasn't all literary stuff. It had a bunch of math stuff too, and I took the fractions test. I mean, this was like back in, what was it, like eighth grade or maybe fifth grade or so. I don't remember when the literary, but yeah, fifth grade maybe, and uh, no, eighth grade because it was definitely middle school. And I did the fractions, and I was the best in the whole city at fractions. Yeah, how about them apples? Anyway, I don't like fractions. <laughs> that was the point of that story. I don't like fractions. I'm going to get rid of them by multiplying by, uh, it doesn't be, need to be negative 4. Let's just multiply everything by 4, which will give me negative x plus 17 equals 4x cubed plus 4x plus 4 times 2, which is 8. Move everything over to the same side. I'm going to have 0 equals 4x cubed plus 5x minus 17 will be minus 9. I don't think I've made any mistakes yet, right? Okay, and then we just need to show that it is going to intersect at 1. So I'm going to do my synthetic division, the one that I did before. No, I did it right, right there. I did it right there, the synthetic division. We're going to do that same thing again. We're going to show that it actually works at 1. So I got the 4 for the x cubed, I got a 0 for the x squared, a 5 for the x, and then negative 9. So if I put in, that's a negative 9. If I put in 1, carry, bring down the 4, so 1 times 4 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4, 5 plus 4 is 9, 1 times 9 is 9. And I got a remainder of 0, which is what I was supposed to get. And now, hmm, I need a little bit more space. Man, this is snazzy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just, that will be 4x squared plus 4x plus 9. And I need to show that this is actually not uh, doable, not factorable. It looks like maybe it could be difference of squares. It actually doesn't work. I can show you why it doesn't work because we're just going to use the discriminant. The discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4ac. b is 4. Now, I hope this works. I'm just assuming because I know that it doesn't actually work. 4 and then 9. So that's going to give us 16 minus 4 times 16 times 9. I have no idea what 16 times 9 is. So that'll be 54. That'll be 144. Whatever it is, it really doesn't matter because 16 minus 4. 144 is negative, and if it's negative, then that means that there are no more real roots to this, which means that it does not intersect again. All right, which makes sense because if we go back to our main picture here, whoop, if I were to draw the normal there like this, you can see that there's no way that this normal line is ever going to cross my original curve again. All right, so I hope that's enough to show you that, yeah, this is pretty much the same thing if you do normals, normals, tangents, all the same stuff. It's just you then flip it and make it negative, the slope. The rest of it, you do the same. 
you're still going to get the slope by finding the derivative because the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent. The normal is just perpendicular to that tangent. All right, well, you know what? It's 11.30. I'm still hanging out in the airport, but, uh, yeah, I think this is just about time, and you got enough to go on for now. So start on your homework, and uh, I'll see you soon.